You're listening to Miss Style, Strength, and Grace with Deidre Murphy. This is your one-stop shop for style, fashion, health, and fitness. Deidre's passion is to help empower women to reach their fullest potential, both inside and out. Deidre and her guests will be discussing how to develop your style, health, and lifestyle hacks to energize your day and inspire you to keep reaching higher levels of success. Deidre is a professional fashion stylist, health guru, and Mrs. Washington 2017. It's time to get open and honest with Deidre. Hello and welcome to today's episode. I'm excited today to talk about why it's important to eat clean, organic, non-GMO, even grass-fed meats, etc. So today I'm discussing the three biggest reasons why you should switch to organic clean food. So we all know the term clean eating has a lot of buzz around it, but let's be honest, clean eating can still mean eating crap. Just because a bag of chips is all organic, non-GMO, doesn't mean that it's open season for eating it. Chips are still chips, and if you're trying to lose weight, they're not going to help. So today I want to talk about eating clean, not just for weight loss, but overall health and wellness. Before we dive into that, let's define what I mean when I say clean eating. So a lot of times people just think, oh, if I just eat clean, then I will lose weight. Well, as I've said before, you could eat clean, like healthy fats. Like let's say you ate a stick of butter all day, every day. Yeah, that's a clean, healthy fat, but you're not going to lose weight. So let's define what I mean when I say clean. To me, clean eating means all natural, organic, non-GMO, and grass-fed meats. When I say non-GMO, GMO stands for genetically modified organisms. We're going to dive into that a little bit later as well. But basically, you're not only looking for the non-GMO project certification on any of your produce and or foods that you're buying, but also looking for all organic And grass-fed, not only grass-fed, but grass-finished. And again, I'm going to talk more about that later. So clean foods can still include like rices, carbs, starch, sugars, etc. But in general, but it it means less processed foods. So by process, I mean, to me, that means you're going to find it more in a box. It's going to be packaged food, things that are more like shelf stable. Those are a little bit more on the terms of like non-clean. So to me, clean foods also mean items that are more natural, more in their raw state. So produce, vegetables, fruits, ingredients, uh, your spices, your things you're going to have in the fridge, even your meats and everything that you're going to keep either frozen or keep in the fridge, that kind of stuff. I like to think when buying foods or grocery shopping or even eating, is this something that God and nature has intended and developed over thousands of years to help heal my body? Or is it man-made processed and not really there to help shed the weight, help my body heal from the inside and help me just feel better? So for today's episode, I want to focus on the overall health benefits of eating clean. Yes, we can lose weight by eating clean, but you can also lose weight by tracking calories and eating pure garbage just to keep your calories low. But at the end of the day, you're still going to feel lethargic, starving for more food since these foods are nutrient lacking and end up with more health problems down the road. Yeah, uh, one Twinkie is about 150 calories. So I guess you could eat Twinkies all day and keep your calories really low, but is that really feeding your body, giving you health and wellness, you might lose weight, but are you going to be healthy in the end? Probably not. And like I said, you're going to still feel hungry because you're not having actually nutrients delivered to your body. I used to eat really poorly. So in high school, every Friday night, we would go down to the local Dairy Queen after football games. And I would gorge myself on not only the the fries and the chicken strip basket, but I'd also have a blizzard or a Sunday or something afterwards as well. And it was like clockwork every Friday night or Saturday night after the games, we headed down there. And luckily, I didn't gain weight. Like naturally, I was active. I My body just didn't gain weight, but after decades of doing this and years of doing this, it wasn't until my like early twenties, later twenties that that 
time period of eating really crappy caught up with me. So some people, it catches up really quickly and maybe they start to, to develop those health problems early on in life, even teenage years. And maybe some people, it doesn't catch up till later on in life. But what are you really putting into your body? That toxic load is eventually going to catch up with you. So the three reasons, the biggest reasons to eat clean. Number one is it helps reduce the toxic load that we are already inundating our systems with. So in our society, we're constantly being bombarded with, you know, free radicals, all those toxins, not only with the foods that we're eating, but even with cleaning products, uh, personal care products, everything like that has chemicals, pesticides, everything else in there. And we're just constantly inundating our system. And by eating clean and organic, we can at least help to eliminate and decrease that toxic load that we're already putting in our systems. So organic produce won't have the pesticides on it like conventional produce. So you would still want to clean and rinse off your vegetables and your produce before eating it, but it's not going to have that toxic residue on the outside. If you're looking to help lower the cost of starting out going organic, I suggest to look up the Clean 15 and the Dirty Dozen list. That's an easy thing you can Google. So pop it into your Google search bar and just type in Clean 15, Dirty Dozen, and there's a hundred or more possibly uh, infographics or even just websites that will flat out list out the Clean 15 and the Dirty Dozen. Overall, Clean 15 are the items that you can get away with buying conventionally just because they don't have the toxic residue pesticides um, build up on them. Usually they're produce that have a little bit of a thicker rind or a skin so that the actual fruit or meat of the produce isn't absorbing the pesticides. And then the Dirty Dozen are the items that you always want to eat organic. So for instance, I know off the top of my head, red peppers or peppers in general are on the Dirty Dozen just because they typically absorb a lot of the chemicals during that process. So those are items that you want to always buy organic. Let's continue on with talking about lowering that toxic load. So I mentioned before that GMOs are genetically modified organisms. This means that man and scientists have specifically changed the DNA of that plant so it will be resistant to pesticides, herbicides, fungicides, and it will grow faster and more so they can create more produce in a shorter amount of time. The problem is, is that it makes those produce items immune to the chemicals and then we're going to ingest those chemicals later. Little known fact, about 90% of all corn in the United States is genetically modified. So unless you're getting it verified non-GMO, so look for that little label on all your corn products. Yep, even the corn tortilla chips that you love, especially those ones at the Mexican restaurants, chances are it's genetically modified corn. So when you are, again, looking for corn products, make sure that it is GMO free. Typically sweet corn is actually non-GMO, but still look into that when you're buying your produce. Also talking about organically raised meats. So organically raised meats are are not going to be injected with the hormones that make them have larger and bigger amounts of meat. You know, if they pump a chicken full of hormones, it's going to have bigger chicken breasts. It's going to have bigger thighs so they can get more meat and make it more profitable for the companies. But then what happens, we go back, we eat those hormones that were ingested into the chicken, and now we're getting inundated in our systems. And that leads to other issues, you know, with especially women, fertility issues because of all the extra hormones, the estrogen and things like that. And that's a whole other topic for another podcast. And so I'll dive into that topic later. But just keep them in mind that you're not just what you ate, it's you are eating what it ate and what it ate. So you want to make sure that what your animals are eating is also organic as well and non, not, doesn't have, you know, pumped full of hormones and other things like that. So that's a little different than talking about grass fed meats or wild caught meats. So there's organic. And then there's also another caveat on top of that of grass fed. So you are not only what your animal ate, but what it ate. So if you're eating, for instance, an organically raised cow, it could just mean that the cow was raised on organic grain or corns, which that's better than going non-organic at all. But 
cows weren't meant to eat corn or grains. When you drive through the country and you see a pasture of cows grazing, what are they eating? They're eating grass. That's what God intended them to eat. So naturally, when they're eating what their bodies were designed to eat, their health and overall level of fats is much better. So then we are ingesting that healthier level of fat. So like I said, when an animal is eating what God intended, their body has a better fat ratio. So grass-fed cows, they're not only lower in calories, but they contain more healthy omega-3 fats, more vitamins A and E, higher level of antioxidants, and up to seven times beta carotene. So that's just a few quick quick stats on why it's better to eat grass-fed cows. Now, also be careful. It's important to not only look for grass-fed, but also grass-finished. A lot of farmers will start with their meats being raised on grass, but then they'll finish them on corn or grains before sending them to butchering about six months out just to help fatten them up in a shorter amount of time. So you want to make sure that your meats are being not only grass fed, but grass finished. My tip is to look for a local farmer so you can maybe go visit the farm. I know it might stink at first, especially if you live in Eastern Washington. Anytime you drive by Sunnyside, Washington, you know you're there because of the smell, (laughs) but maybe just go visit it once so you know what type of farm that they are having, but you can trust the source and it'll actually being cheaper, end up being cheaper in the long run rather than going to the store, the grocery store where you're having a higher markup because of the middleman, you can cut that price down by going directly to the source We just ended up ordering half a cow. Actually, it was a whole cow, I guess. We split it with my in-laws. And so now we have half a cow butchered in our freezer. We have everything from grass or uh, ground up meat to steaks to stew meat, kind of everything. And I ended up having to drive out in the middle of nowhere. I uh, stopped at a transformer station in the middle of the country to meet with my mother-in-law to get our half of the cow. And I had to bring this huge ice chest and like fill it to the brim with all the meat just so I could get it back in time without it uh, thawing on us. And, you know, I'm so passionate about making sure that what we're eating is healthy that I even take all those stews and I take a bunch of the ground beef and I make my own dog food for my animal. Um, If you haven't heard of my dog Tinkerbell yet, you're probably going to hear about her in future episodes. So my little dog Tinkerbell is a adore and adorable chihuahua. And unfortunately we had to have all of her teeth removed. That's another topic. But because of that, I home make all of her food in a crock pot. So it's all organic. She's getting grass fed beef. Everything is like seasoned. I add some salt and pepper and garlic for her. And then I blend up her food and I end up freezing it. So she has, you know, months of at a time of food readily available. So that's how passionate I am about making sure everything in the Murphy household is healthy. Now I mentioned a minute ago about looking at wild caught meats. So this is more specific for fish and seafood. You want to make sure your fish is wild caught and, um, you know, naturally raised, not farm raised, excuse me. Farm raised fish is truly disgusting. It's a nasty industry. So just some quick, you know, information. Number one, they will refeed fish in the farm with other dead fish. So if fish dies, they mulch it up and they put it back in with the food. And so other fish are eating that dead fish. Gross. Like if that's not enough to make you stay away from farm raised fish, then you must have no soul. <laughs> they also will feed them with corn and grains. Um, I don't remember. I don't know about you, but I never saw corn growing in the ocean or in the river. So they're not eating what they were naturally designed to do, which we talked about that a couple minutes ago. Rewind and replay that if you need to. And it unbalances their omega ratios. Again, meaning we ingest that poor omega ratio. So you know, as much as say my husband and I love sushi, I do love my sushi. We can't get it here where we live. So we just don't go out and eat it. Whenever we're in a coastal city or someplace like Seattle, where we know we can trust the sources, that's when I get to indulge a little bit and enjoy some sushi. I love the, the, is it the the nigiri where they put the raw fish on just a, a bed of rice? Oh, so good. Salmon mm, all over that. So I have to get my seafood and salmon 
flavors, you know, here, luckily we do have a lot of locally raised or locally found trout, like river trout and river fish, such as salmon, just where we live, the Columbia river comes through our area. So I am able to satiate my, my seafood with that here in Washington. My, so I guess that was my second rule was looking at the meats and how it's helping to heal your body with the proper amounts of fats. So that was number two. And then number three, it just helps you have less sugar overall. Eating clean will inevitably mean less sugar because things are not having to be processed as much. They're not having to be preserved with sugars as much. And I could go on for hours about the negative health effects of sugar, not only with weight gain, but other health problems like allergies, colds, flus, headaches. I used to get colds and flus all the time. And I think, you know, a lot of it has to do with how I've changed my health and wellness overall. But a big part of that is the reduction of my sugar intake. And now, especially if I feel like a little bit of a head cold or something coming on, I practically eliminate all sugar and I get over that cold in like a day. I heard, I know you heard, heard me snap there in the background, but that's literally how fast I can get over a cold now because I just don't feed that cold with the sugar intake. Now, obviously there's a lot of natural sugars like those found in fruits, even vegetables. But for the sake of today's topic, I'll just talk or touch on the fact that lowering sugar content will help you lose weight in the long run. Um, Some clean foods have a high sugar load like apples and bananas, but at least the sugar is a natural sugar and not something like high fructose corn syrup, which again, I could go down a rabbit hole on high fructose corn syrup. That's a later topic. But the less refined or processed by man, the sugar is, the more easily your body can digest it and turn it into usable energy instead of storing it as fat. So don't we all want to, you know, have those carbs and those sugars used as energy rather than stored in our belly? I know I do. Another quick tip for sweeten things, sweetening things without sugar is stevia. If you were to look through my purse, you'd find this little droplet container of liquid stevia and I will use it especially in my coffee when I'm on the go it it's very potent so you only need like one to two drops to sweeten things up but they do help curb that sweet tooth especially like in coffee or tea but they have zero calories they won't spike your glycemic index and overall just kind of helps you get over that little hurdle especially if you're on a, a sugar detox so those were my three takeaways of why you should turn to clean eating, you know, all organic, non-GMO, grass-fed, or wild-caught meats. So just to recap, number one, it was that it helps reduce the toxic load that we already put in our body. Number two, it helps with the fat ratios that we're ingesting. And number three, it helps with less sugar intake, which can mean to lead to weight loss and other health benefits. So I hope you've learned a little bit about what it means to eat clean. Like I said before, I just have to think to myself, is this something natural and intended to help heal my body? I want you to focus on eating to live, not living just to eat. Life is about balance and and doing the best you can. You know, for instance, when you're traveling, it can be really hard, especially when you're eating out a lot because you're on the road or in an airport. I will be doing a future episode on some of my own little travel hacks I do when eating healthy on the go, but am I perfect? Mm, Heck no. Just the other day, my mom dropped off some of our favorite cupcakes from a local bakery just as a way to say thank you to my husband and I for some help that we did around her house. And you better believe that I woofed down that chocolate peanut butter cupcake of deliciousness probably woofed it down in less than five minutes, but it's, it's a once in a while thing. It's not uh, an every week thing or an everyday thing. And it just is something that you kind of have as like a sweet treat every now and then. So again, I hope that you, you've learned something today until next time. I'm Deidre with style and grace. Hey ladies, thanks for listening and we hope you enjoyed today's episode. To help empower more women, please be a doll and rate, review, and subscribe to this podcast. For show notes and other free resources we mentioned today, go to stylebydeidra.com.